When using a presentation aid, you should be familiar with your aid's technology. In order to keep things running smoothly and avoid undue stress, you should have at least a moderate knowledge of the technology's mechanics. If you do not know how to use the equipment, either forego it or take the time to learn. Fumbling through a visual will make you lose your credibility and your confidence. This can be embarrassing and outright disastrous depending on the circumstances. Kara works for a company which sells flight simulators. The company provided her a high-tech animated visual for a public appearance. Kara figured it would run like a regular video and therefore did not bother prepping. However, when speech began, she could not figure out which buttons to press. After a few minutes of panic scrabbling, the animation finally began working, but the damage was already done. The audience was unimpressed by the display, and Kara lost many potential customers. When it comes to technology, always remember Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. Equipment breaks, websites crash, videos glitch, and power can fail. Even for the most tech-savvy of people, these problems can still throw off the rhythm of a speech. However, a well-prepared speech can still run smoothly even when problems arise. Experienced speakers know you should always have a backup plan so these challenges do not impede your speech. This plan should include no technology whatsoever. Here is one example. Evan was about to set up a PowerPoint for his speech when the building lost power. Although he could no longer use his aid, he wasn't worried. Evan had printed out the key slides on large posters in case he needed an alternative. In addition, you ought to be ready to speak without a visual. You should know the subject like the back of your hand as you may want to supplement your original speech with information from the aid. When done well, your audience may not even realize anything was missing. For instance, while making a speech on cardiovascular health, Greta had planned to show a website that would illustrate methods of lowering health risks. Yet when she got to the location, the computer would not work, so Greta skipped over the website portion during her speech. As with the rest of your speech, make sure to practice with your presentation aids. Practicing in advance is the best way to avoid difficulties during your speech. Take time to go over the speech with your presentation aids. It also might be wise to practice on site ahead of time. That way you can look for possible technological issues and situate yourself. Just because the visual might seem like the easiest part does not mean you should skip practicing. A new public speaker was expected to give a demonstration during their speech on watercolors. She thought that because painting was one of her hobbies, she could go without practicing. However, she quickly regretted it. During her speech, she forgot to mention one of the steps and began fumbling through the rest of her demonstration. Finally, make sure to double check all legal guidelines and rules for the venue where you are giving your presentation. Always cite your sources and don't use copyrighted images unless you have paid for them. It is also important to avoid dangerous props. If you are uncertain about a certain prop, ask the person in charge of the venue. Peter was planning out his speech on different sword designs. He really wanted to show off some swords from his collection, but was unsure if that would be allowed. After researching the local rules, Peter found that the building had a strict policy against blades, so he decided to display photos of his collection instead. In addition, you should ask before using any animals as a visual. Even a well-trained pet might act unpredictably in an unknown environment. You should also consider whether they would cause an allergic reaction for your listeners. This does not mean that animals are out of bounds. Just be extra careful. If you let the animal get used to the area ahead of time and keep the audience at a distance, you can lower the risk of things going out of control. Consider the following scenario. Carol is presenting a speech on how lizards make good pets. In order to illustrate this, she decided to bring in her own pet bearded dragon, Sam. Before committing to bringing him, Carol asks the program manager for permission. She keeps Sam hidden in a comfortable pet carrier until she's ready for the unveiling. Then once Carol is near the end of her speech, she brings out Sam and explains about bearded dragons. She makes sure to hold him carefully, 
just like she described to her audience. Seeing Sam in person not only reinforces Carol's speech, but also convinces her audience that lizards can be wonderful pets. Now let's review what we've just learned. Presentation aids are the additional materials used in a speech other than the spoken words. Often these aids involve some type of visual. Presentation aids are useful tools that can add strength to your speech. However, unless they are used correctly, visuals can cause more trouble than they are worth. There are certain guidelines that help speakers use aids effectively. First, make sure your presentation aid is relevant to the topic. If not, it is better to exclude it. An irrelevant aid will only hinder your effectiveness and decrease your credibility. During your speech, you should thoroughly explain the presentation aid and how it connects to your topic. You should not expect the audience to understand the presentation aid automatically. At the same time, don't read the presentation aid word for word. Keep eye contact with your audience while displaying the presentation aid. You need to watch the group so you can maintain the audience's interest in your speech. Watching the audience allows you to see if you need to be louder or more engaging. If you must look at the visual, keep it brief. Likewise, you should never turn your back on the audience. Not only does it make monitoring their reactions difficult, but it also makes hearing the speaker more challenging for the audience. Turning away is also rude. So, when looking at the aid, turn your head, not your body. In order to maintain their respect, you have some control over the audience. This will be slightly more difficult with the visual, but certain steps can avoid the situation spiraling out of control. First of all, do not pass objects out to the audience. If handouts are needed for the speech, you may pass them out beforehand and give instructions on their use. Technology has quickly become the most commonly used source of visual aids. This is because these aids are easy to set up and display. Nonetheless, a tool is only convenient when you know how to use it. Make sure you are familiar with the technology you use. If something is new, take the time to learn before the speech are avoided altogether. Despite technology's strong points, it is important to remember that they can still go wrong. Have a backup plan for any aids which are technology-based. You should also be prepared to present the speech without an aid. Make sure to practice the speech with your visual aid. If possible, you may like to test it at the planned location. Practice might not make perfect, but it does lower the risk of mistakes. Finally, always check the legality of your aid before including it. Avoid plagiarism and don't violate copyright laws. It is advisable to check state and local laws too. Visuals should be both legal and safe. If you have any questions, ask the person in charge of the event. Be very careful when including animals in your speech. You want to keep the animal and the audience safe. In order to do so, you will need to keep an eye on both of them. Inquire ahead of time if anyone in the audience is allergic to pets. These tips will help ensure your visual aids offer the strongest support that it can. However, you should remember to devote just as much time to the speech itself. A visual aid can only be as good as the speech it backs up. Yet when the two parts work together, they can create an unforgettable impression. Thank you for visiting the Public Speaking Project's virtual classroom. To view other modules about speechwriting, go to www.publicspeakingproject.org.